I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month's trial of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be talking about API responses, responsive images, font compression, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we'll be talking about a project called datacollection.js. This is a JavaScript library for manipulating data from API responses. Now, you may occasionally run into a situation where you return a bunch of data from a server. Maybe it's through Ajax or you're getting JSON or something like that. So you may want to transform all of that data in a certain way. Let's say, for example, we have a list of characters uh, that comes back. Let's say it's a movie or something like that. And we want to sort them by age or find out the max age of one of the characters or sort them by last name or something like that. Well, we can use a data collection and then sort and filter based on that. Now, here is an example. If we want to find the top age, we could say this chart object that we have, and we query it, and we look for the max age. Same thing if we want to look for unique locations. We have this wonderful little query language that filters using JavaScript. Now, there are tons of different options that you can use here. Uh, you can filter it to find a certain gender or even an age less than or equal to 40. Now, if we scroll down here, we can see all of the different methods that we have. Uh, you can define different indexes depending on what data you'll be querying. And if you want to know how to do all of the different queries, that is unfortunately all the way at the bottom here. Uh, here we go. Uh, the different filters. So the is filter, make sure that a certain attribute is certain. So let's say we want to find all the characters whose age is 30 or not equal to something. We also have filters for greater than and greater than or equal to as well as less than and less than or equal to. There's also a contains filter. So we can see if a certain element contains a certain value. This works on strings or arrays and it also has an equivalent that is case insensitive. This only works for string comparisons. Now, uh, this is pretty easy to use, and it's a great little tool. So check it out in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And also search for us on iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. Very nice. Well, next up is an article over on the Opera developer blog titled Native Responsive Images. Now, if you've done any kind of responsive design. You've probably dealt with responsive images in some form or another. Maybe you've set them to be a fluid width so that they fill up their container and just set their size to 100% and so on. Uh, this article goes into a lot of depth about the quest for native responsive images. In other words, some sort of element that we can use on web pages that's like the image element but actually serves up the correct asset depending on the size of the screen or how many pixels there are and so on. And up to this point, we've pretty much been either serving just one resource, so we've been serving up the same image for all different sizes, or you might have a situation where you have to serve multiple images, but those images actually get loaded up on every device, no matter what the size. Both situations aren't that great. Now, this is, like I said, a very in-depth article, but I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here that says, can I use it today? And it's actually talking about, for the most part, the picture element, but also the source set attribute, which allows you to use multiple images. Now, the source set is already supported in browsers since Chrome 34, Opera 21, and it will be supported in Safari 8. However, the picture element, which is a little bit more interesting for a couple of reasons, it's going to be shipped in a few weeks from the time of this recording, so you might actually already have it by the time you're watching this. It'll be shipped in Chrome 38, Opera 25, and Firefox 38. So be sure to pay attention to that because the picture element 
will probably play an important role in the future. Now, as for Internet Explorer, of course, historically Internet Explorer has lagged behind on some things, they've been ahead on others, but it's not in Internet Explorer at this point, it's under consideration. So the IE development team, however, has seemed to be pretty receptive to this, so it's anticipated that it will change to in development shortly, or at least hopefully. Uh, so anyway, this is a really in-depth article basically chronicling the whole story of native responsive images and it's really worth the read because a lot has been going on in a very short amount of time in this particular space and if you haven't been paying attention, this is a good way to get all caught up. It's cool that uh, browser vendors are being, um, you know, so on top of supporting that stuff. They are. It's, it's good because it's important. I mean, there's this huge proliferation of devices everywhere and uh, yeah, it's hard to get responsive images onto all of them. I guess you could say the browser vendors are being very responsive. They are. Next up, we have an article on the Lickety Split blog about optimizing your font downloads when you are using Twitter Bootstrap and Font Awesome. So this actually doesn't apply only to Font Awesome and Bootstrap, but did you know that by default, uh, some Apache installations do not compress font files by default? What? Yeah, so you can actually turn on HTTP compression and gzipping. Uh, it's only a few lines if you have um, certain mods installed, like mod deflate. And here is an example demonstration. We've got, all right, Fawn Awesome in here and Bootstrap in here. Then without any compression going on, this is the download. It's 540K. Optimized, it's 207K. That is a 62% savings or 333K just for a very, very small change to your Apache configuration. Now, this is also uh, this also works with Nginx, and the trick is adding SVGs and font files to the default compression. Now, here would be the configuration code that you use. Add output filters. Uh, here's the regular text HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can just go ahead and add in SVG and XML and different fonts, and then boom, you are good to go. Another good thing to install is Mod Page Speed, which will do some of those things for you. And there are also equivalents in Nginx and IIS. So go ahead and check that out. We'll have a link up in the show notes. And also, don't forget to join us for a free month's trial of Treehouse at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is a wonderful blog post over on the Code Drops blog called Tab Styles Inspiration. Now, if you want to learn how all of these different tabs work and sort of what the thinking behind them was, you can maybe check out the blog post, but that's boring. Let's actually look at the demo. So here is one style of tabs. That's pretty cool. Here's another style. So you can actually click on these and it will change what's down here. Normally that would be maybe a full web page, so that's cool. There's another style if you want to kind of underline things, have a little bit of animation here. There's another one. Here's one where the tabs are sort of on the top. Anyway, I thought this was a really cool post. Uh, not a whole lot to say about it, but I thought there were a ton of really wonderful tab styles here that, Ooh, look at that are a lot different than some of the more traditional things that you've seen. So maybe you want to, so maybe you want to rip off uh, CSS tricks here and have some tabs exactly like uh, Chris Coyer's website. Here's exactly how to do them, and you can download the source code from the article, and that is of course included in the show notes. A link to that. Very nice. Let's uh, let's tab on over to the next tab. Uh, we're going to be talking about <laughs> advanced objects in JavaScript. Now, there are a ton of different ways to create objects in JavaScript, and in this extremely thorough blog post, they are uh, demonstrated. Now, this goes from very, very simple 
to just creating a function to create a JavaScript object and then using the prototype property to create it and then return a new one. And then, all right, we have a new product. We're setting the type to Apple. And then we can call product.type and we see Apple printed to the screen. Now, there are tons and tons of ways to do this. And this blog post gets more advanced with how you actually go through and create these different JavaScript objects. So the first one was a setter. Now we can go through and define a getter. Instead of calling prototype later, we can actually define it to its own function here. And then the getter will be the different type and setter as well. We define getter and setter earlier. Now this walks through with defining properties instead of just doing prototypes. We can use object.define property to the prototype of product and so on and so forth. Now this gets extremely complicated but is also a very, very in-depth guide to creating advanced objects in JavaScript. Now you'll see a lot of JavaScript libraries will do various forms of object manipulation and creation, uh, different classes, libraries for classes. I know CoffeeScript does it a certain way. And if you want some background into how some of these libraries will create these advanced objects, I definitely recommend checking out this article. And that is about all we have time for this week. Who are you on Twitter, Nick? I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also get us on iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show, and please rate us. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show to get a free month of Treehouse. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.